Episode 6 of Squid Game contains an interesting strategic problem. And as a warning, turn this video off now if you don't want minor spoilers. In that episode, pairs of contestants play a marble game. To begin, each has 10 marbles. They then take turns playing a guessing game to try to win all of their opponent's marbles. In each round, the rules are as follows. One player is designated the hider. The other is designated the guesser. The hider will secretly hold a non-zero number of marbles in their hand from their current stake. After that, the guesser will choose a number of marbles of their own from their stake and guess whether the hider's hidden marbles are odd or even in number. The episode itself is not perfectly clear about the rules afterward, and I have seen multiple differing accounts online. However, what I am about to describe is the most common interpretation, and if you have another one, you can post it in the comments below and we can talk about it. If the guesser guessed correctly, the hider must give the guesser marbles equal to the number that the guesser chose. If the guesser guessed incorrectly, the guesser must give the hider marbles equal to the number in the hider's hand. The roles will switch every round. So in the first round, if you're the hider, you become the guesser. And if you're the guesser in the first round, you become the hider in the second. Play will continue until one person runs out of marbles. The person that has run out loses, and if you've seen the show, you know what happens next. To illustrate how one of these rounds might play out, the hider begins by secretly placing some number of marbles in their hand. We'll call it three. The guesser then puts some number of marbles in their hand, perhaps five, and guesses odd or even. If they were to guess odd here, then they would win because the hider has three marbles. That's an odd number. And by the rules of the game, the hider must give the guesser a number of marbles equal to what the guesser had, which in that case is five. On the other hand, if the guesser had chosen even, then the guess would be incorrect because the hider had three marbles in their hand. And so not only does the hider get to keep all of their marbles under that circumstance, they also win a number of marbles equal to what they were hiding, which in this case was three. And so the guesser must give them that number. Here's the puzzle. How should the hider play in this game? And how should the guesser play? And if you want to think a little bit harder about it, this game is not perfectly symmetric because the hider is different than the guesser. And even though they take turns, it might be the case that the first person to hide is advantaged or the first guesser is advantaged. Or maybe neither is. Think about that for a moment. And while you do, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is to think about mixed strategies, which is a topic I cover in Chapter 1 of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. As an additional hint, although this game in a single round has quite a few strategies, never mind the fact that there could be multiple rounds of this game played, the solution itself is fairly simple. Are you ready for the solution? Okay, here goes. In the first round, the hider should go 50-50 on placing nine or 10 marbles in their hand. And the guesser should place 10 marbles in their hand and go 50-50 on the guess of odd or even. Now that you know the solution, do you see why it's optimal for the players to adopt these strategies? 
it may help to think about this in terms of a payoff matrix. When they actually play according to these strategies, there are four different possible outcomes of the first round. These two, where the guesser chooses odd and the hider chooses nine, or the guesser chooses even and the hider chooses 10, are straightforward to think through. The guesser has chosen correctly, and because they have put 10 marbles in their hand, the hider must give the guesser all of their marbles. Consequently, the hider loses the entire game, and there's not going to be a second round. Thus, in terms of the probability of winning the overall game, not just the single round, the outcome for those pairs of strategies are a 100% chance of winning for the guesser and a 0% chance of winning for the hider. One more of these outcomes is straightforward. Think about the circumstance where the guesser goes odd and the hider hides 10 marbles. This time, the guesser is incorrect. And as a consequence, the guesser must pay marbles equal to what the hider put in their hand. Well, it's 10 marbles, which means that the guesser loses their entire stake and is thus the loser overall in the game. There's not going to be a second round. As such, the winning probabilities overall are 0% for the guesser and 100% for the hider. The last outcome appears to be more complicated. The guesser has chosen incorrectly on even, and now must pay the hider a number of marbles equal to what's in the hider's hand. In this case, it's 9, which means the guesser does not lose their entire stake. Thus, we might write the probability of winning overall from this outcome as some function equal to the number of marbles that the guesser of this turn has left, which in this case is 1. Thus, p of 1 represents the continuation probability going into the next round that the guesser will win overall. It may seem complicated to calculate what that exact probability is. But it turns out that the second round is actually straightforward. As a consequence of this first round, the player on the right had to pay 9 marbles to the player on the left. And the right player, which was previously the guesser, now becomes the hider. But notice, they have exactly one marble left. Thus, it is impossible for them to hide an even number of marbles. They must hide one, and one is an odd number. In turn, the player on the left, who in the second round is the guesser, knows for sure to choose odd. Thus, they will be guaranteed in the second round to acquire that final marble. In turn, we know the ultimate probabilities of winning given a first round outcome of an even guess and hiding nine. The hider will certainly emerge victorious eventually, whereas the guesser in that first round is doomed to lose. In game theory, the strategic interaction that remains once we've done all of those calculations is straightforward. This is a pure guessing game known as matching pennies. It's been studied for years, and we know that the best way of playing this game is for each player to randomize 50-50 on both of their choices. Given that, each player is equally likely to win as they are to lose. So even though the game is asymmetric, where one player is starting as the guesser and the other player is starting as the hider, it turns out that each is equally likely to win when they are playing strategically optimally. Of course, we should also discuss why holding a different number of marbles is not optimal. From the hider's perspective, why not choose a different number, something smaller than nine, maybe seven? Well, if you were to do that, and you end up in the outcome where the guesser has chosen even, and you have chosen to hide seven, 
you no longer have a guaranteed probability of winning. Instead, the guesser of this round will enter the next round with three marbles. And it is possible from there for them to win multiple consecutive rounds and eventually emerge victorious. What that exact number is, is not obvious. But at the same time, that information is superfluous. We know that if you hide 9 instead, that you are guaranteed to win under this circumstance. And if you were to hide 7 as an alternative, you can't do better than winning for sure. And in fact, we know that you're going to do slightly worse than that at least. As a result, choosing odd numbers less than 9 is not a good idea. And same thing with choosing even numbers less than 10. Meanwhile, you might wonder whether the guesser should put a different number of marbles in their hand instead. Perhaps six or something like that. The problem here is that when the guesser guesses correctly, they don't automatically win. Instead, that probability of victory is going to be some nebulous function of the circumstance where they start the next round with 16 marbles. But similar to what we just went through a moment ago, there is some chance that the opponent will win every subsequent round after that. And if they do, that opponent will eventually win the game. Once again, it is difficult to calculate what that exact probability is, but it's also superfluous. We know that it's not going to be as good as winning for sure. In fact, it's going to be slightly worse than that at least. Consequently, the guesser should always be choosing 10 marbles in this first round, so that when they guess correctly, they win the game outright. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Did you figure this one out? If you did, you're doing better than the contestants on the Squid Game. Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.